This is my fall garden, and I'm pleased as punch. It is almost November, and this is what I have going on in my garden. Everyone, welcome back to Warrior's Garden. Well, it's the fall, finally, but it's still gonna be 112 tomorrow. So fall in Arizona, and it's a little bit different than fall in other parts of the world. However, it is time to plant, and I've got a lot to do, because I wanna get my fall crops in. I didn't really have much to do in the summer because of coming back from my deployment. I did clean up the garden and save some of my plants that you saw. But now, now I get to plant and do some of the things I want to do. So uh, let's take a look. Here's the state of the garden right now. The passion fruit and the dragon fruit are doing really well. Uh, I lost a grapevine. I'm just heartbroken about that. That was my red grapes. And my green grapes are doing fantastic and had a good harvest. But the rest of the garden's a little bit of a mess. So I'm going to have to clean it up. I kept the weeds out, but I need to prepare these beds. And so the first bed I'm going to work on is this one back here. I'm going to pull that mulch I have sitting there out, and I'm going to put some good compost in because that bed's a little lower than I like. It's settled. And then I'm going to pull this netting off. I have to put that netting around because well, I get varmints in there. Even with this being an enclosed garden, I have ground squirrels that come in. So that's going to come off. And then uh, I'm going to clean up this bed a bit. And in my back garden, things are looking pretty good. I need to cut my grass, but that's lower on the priority list at the moment. My figs are doing well. My citrus are doing well. A little bit of sun scorching on them. Um, but in that bed over there, I have a special treat that I'm putting in there. Some seeds my daughter gave me. And I will show that to you in a bit. Yeah, I love zip ties. These are special ones. You're wondering probably how do they withstand the Arizona sun? UV resistant. They do pretty good, but they still get brittle after a while. Great for holding things together though. Condition the soil. I had to, unfortunately, you didn't get to see that. My camera overheated. I've cooled it down, so hopefully it'll last for a while. Um, but we've conditioned the soil. I'm just going to put uh, some more mulch on top using that coconut husk I've talked about before. That's going to go on top of the back one, a little bit more on this one. And then I'm going to go and plant my seeds. Should be good.
things I want to show you is I use this uh, coconut husk um, mulch that I got from Costco. The best way to get this thing to break apart is use a wheelbarrow. I've done this before. Fill it with water and let it soak in and then break it apart. Um, and then that's going to go on the bed. You saw me in the video breaking this one apart here. That was because it was already expanded by rainwater and I just broke it apart and put it in. I'm going to put a bit more in here. I actually could use more soil in this bed, but um, I'm just going to go with it, what I got right now. And I'm probably going to put my peas and my squash in here. So these other beds are nearly prepared. Oh, another thing I wanted to show you. This is how I did my water. I don't recommend it. There's actually better methods. I'm going to make it work for now until I can put a better method in. I, I like some of the ones where they put a grid pattern, the square foot gardening pattern, and it just sprays in in each grid. That's, I think, a better method. This works sufficiently. Um, it does leave some dry spots, but I'm probably going to redo this in the near future. So, all right, let's get on with it. So what you see me doing there on the fountain is a costume fight I have with uh, algae. <laughs> and if I forget to put algicide in my fountain, it does that. It'll eventually be completely covered in algae. So every so often I got to put algae side in so it doesn't do that stuff. All right, so these are the seeds I'm gonna use. Now I'm not endorsing burpee. I just happen to get a good deal on them. Um, I've used burpee before and had good luck. We'll see how they do this year. Um, but you can see, starting on the left, we've got Swiss chard, some uh, uh, Walton winter squash, Walton butternut. Um, we got garden sweet burpee cucumbers, garden beans, those are bush beans, peas, some, some lovely uh, beets there, and some green onions, and some yellow squash. It should be fun. We'll see how they do. The squash worries me a little bit because I've had bad luck with squash, so we'll see what happens this year. All right, that's the gang. Let's get them in the ground.
All right, folks, that's probably gonna have to be it for the moment until this evening. It's starting to get too darn hot out here. Yeah, and I don't wanna hurt myself. But I got a lot done. I've got one bed planted with Swiss chard and Brussels sprouts. The other bed down there at the far corner, that's going to be uh, my green beans, my peas, because I rotate my legumes around so it fixates nitrogen in the soil. And this bed here is going to be my green onions um, and uh, beets, probably. And then I think on the end of each of that bed, I'm going to do the cucumbers and the squash, and then I'm going to do more out there. So, all right, we'll see you all this evening. Okay, so I've got everything planted, and I want you to see some of what I've done. First of all, you'll notice I put the netting on. Why do I put netting on my garden? Well, one simple reason, birds. Because birds will see when these things start sprouting, my veggies, they'll know that there's a little seed under that sprout, and they will come and pluck that little sprout out and eat the seed. Had that happen a few times, especially on what I have over there. Over there I have peas and green beans. They love those seeds. So I have to put netting to prevent the birds from doing that. The other thing they'll do, and that netting there I actually need to raise up a little bit. I just haven't done it yet. Um, this one too, but for the most part, once they get their second stage leaves, you know, you get the little first leaves on the stem and then you get the second leaves. Once they get the second leaves, the birds will leave them alone. The other problem I have is I'm in suburbia and people have cats and the cats love these beds for a cat litter. And we have one in particular that likes to come in here occasionally and use my garden beds for a cat litter. So. That mesh prevents the cats from doing that until the foliage gets big enough to dissuade them. So, but it's looking pretty good. I'm happy. I'm excited to see what happens. This is the first time I planted in fall like this. So hopefully it goes well. Wish me the best on this. So as a bonus, I wanted to show you what I put here. Um, these are things my daughter gave me, which I'm excited. She gave me the wild crafted devil's claw seeds. Um, oops. And if you can see that, that uh, desert gathering desert wildflowers. And these Arizona native wildflower Mexican gold poppies. They should do okay. I know it's the fall, but they should have time to bloom. Um, we'll see. But uh, I didn't want to save them to spring. I don't know how long these seeds are viable for. But if anything, they'll overweather until spring. We'll see what happens. So quick follow up. This has been, it's a month later from when I planted this. And for the most part, everything's gone really well. Um, I've got a lot of herbs in, some basil, uh, some cilantro, some thyme, some oregano. These are my Chinese cabbage. They're doing pretty good. I could have planted them a little bit better. That's my beets. Um, some other stuff I can't remember what I planted. <laughs> oh well, it'll be good whatever it is. And then I have some green onions. Unfortunately, that bed over there, you can just see under there, those are Brussels sprouts. The birds got most of that because I was too slow getting uh, netting around it like I did this one. Over here I've got green beans and peas, cucumbers down here, squash right here, it's looking fantastic. My dragon fruit are doing really well. I got more basil there. I've got uh, two types of lavender and some mint back there. And my passion fruit is looking fantastic. And I'm going to show you back here. I've got squash going on back here. 
that I planted. I never planted anything here before, so I'm trying it. I mean, I planted lots of other stuff, but I've not tried squash. My figs are looking good. Citrus are coming in. It is just looking really good. So overall, I am really pleased. First fall garden and I can't complain. I'm glad you joined me on this. I hope those of you who can will uh, be able to do it. And those of you who are going into winter, well, I'll be honest, I miss the fall and I miss the winter, but I look forward to the winters here because I get to grow stuff. And I don't miss 115 degree temperatures. It's, it's in the low 80s and it's getting cool at night and it's just an awesome time in Arizona. So. Take care, stay safe, and keep gardening.